Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is a morning market prep video for April 8th, 2021. Well, hey guys, today's going to be a no blog Friday, not because there was any kind of a problem. I just didn't feel like doing one, I guess, because there really isn't much on the economic or earnings or, or um, earnings calendar to um, really warrant um, a blog. So I thought, hey, let's just take a break. Let's just do the video today. So hope you don't mind. So how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market today. As you guys remember, we were I was talking yesterday that I thought there may be that possibility of additional pullback um, in the market, and we certainly had that right up until late afternoon where we finally started to catch the rally. And I suggested I thought that there was a chance that we might see a bit of a um, end of week rally and we're getting a little bit of follow through this morning I can't tell you it's going to continue that what we're going to want to do is we want to do what we always do and that's take a look at these charts take a look at the price action of the charts and respect price support resistance and trend in um, as we see it now take a look we've got this downtrend little downtrend here in the chart moving on and we've got a little bit of a price resistance now keep in mind that price resistance here in the chart kind of extends across over here quite a ways um, there's quite a little bit of price resistance there now before we can really claim bullishness in this chart one of the first things we need to do is we need to break that downtrend here and we need to prove that we can hold it as support Prove that we can hold it. You see, we've had a lot of false um, breakouts here. Uh, notice where we'll break out right in here, break out, and then completely reverse it. And that's why we need that proof that we can actually hold that higher low. That's where we begin a trend, and that's where we can maybe see some kind of resumption of trend. So you want to be careful, um, you know, chasing extended stocks uh, moving up in that position. Um, because you don't want to get caught in the potential reversal. And we've seen a lot of that. Just uh, take, for example, that intraday candle right there where we popped up and we were up 120, 130 points and then completely reversed on the day. And that's why we want to respect these downtrends and we want to respect the resistance levels in the chart. So having said that, if those bulls can get moving here today, we'll want to watch this level across here. See if they can push us up through there, push us up through that downtrend. And if they can, the next level that we're going to want to be paying attention to is right up there where we struggled with before. If those bears happen to find reason for inspiration, and I don't know that there's going to be enough data today to really give them reason to push all that hard to the downside unless we have something change geopolitically or we see those bonds continue to be a problem for us. But um, if we were to fail down, uh, drop back down through this level right here, that's going to be a pretty substantial problem here for the Dow because what that would be is a failure of the 50 day moving average. So we're going to want to watch that closely. And let's also keep in mind those resistance levels that I talked about are right up there around that 200 day moving average. Let's take a look at our SPY. Now SPY, very similar situation. And once again, we've got this little downtrend. We made lower highs, lower lows. And we'll want to watch that pretty closely and carefully. We have a couple of resistance levels in this chart, as you can see. Got a little price resistance in the bottom of that chart right there. And then if we can push on through that downtrend, this right here could be um, a little bit of a challenge for us. So watch that carefully. And once again, we need to see that price pop through, hold, and then show us some bullishness. Um, and if we can get something like that, then we have a little bit clearer picture to the upside and a little bit better trading. And by the way, let me, let me point this out because I've got a little time this morning with not doing the blog. If, if I were to um, draw a line right across here, and unfortunately a lot of people speculate too much here in the market, and I wanna show you if we were to break 
this downtrend right here instead of speculating heavily right here it's okay to trade long but instead of speculating heavily i want you to notice if we were to break out of that move and then pull back and hold the higher low and then show buyers i want you to notice your buy point is going to be pretty much the same with a higher probability setup so your buy point um, we don't have to pick bottoms to be successful in the market. And as a matter of fact, one of the things I'm going to do this afternoon at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time, guys, you're going to start seeing some information on that. I'll get that posted. But 2 p.m. Eastern today, I'm going to be doing a live stream on um, on um, YouTube because I, I want to cover a subject that has been very important to me here just recently um, because I'm seeing a lot of people lose a lot of money and because they're over trading this volatility and I want to talk about how, the importance of maybe trading less when when the market is giving you um, uh, uncertainty. Um, so for example, I want to talk about the fact that so far this year, I have had a record beginning to my new year, and I've probably traded less than I have for many, many years um, through the first quarter. So uh, I want you to think about that. Sometimes activity does not equal results. And if you slow things down and you're a little bit pickier about trades, you have great returns and you just don't trade as much. So think about that. 2 p.m. Eastern today, we're going to be talking about that live on YouTube. Let's take a look um, here at our technicals in the SPY. And if we take a look right here, you can see holding some um, support there of that 200 day moving average didn't quite make it to the 50. And that's one of those things where we typically do test the 50 day moving average. Not saying we will, but that possibility uh, does exist that we could hit some resistance in here and still reverse and catch that 50 day moving average. So we'll want to watch that closely. Now let's take a look at that QQQ. Now QQQ had a little bit more trouble yesterday. It just didn't really get that big a rally. We kind of struggled a little bit um, in the chart. And as you can see, we've got a fairly significant level of price resistance right across here in the chart. And we still have that lower low that we created here and lower high. It's not as clean a downtrend um, at this point. You can see it's a little bit flatter in that trend. So we're going to want to watch this area as we push up. And we know tech um, has some problems with these uh, bonds doing that. Um, anytime borrowing um, goes on um, and liquidity problems and bond uh, inversions and things like that, tech seems to suffer the most. So you'll want to watch that carefully in here. If we rally and fail, um, that could be a problem here for us. So watch that close. Um, once again, if those bulls can get that energy, we need to try and crack that level right there. And then if we can crack that one, we need to crack that level right there. And once again, we want to hold that higher low and then we have more evidence of that upside potential move in the market. If we were to start to fail, if those bears get busy in here and we start pushing down, then we do have that problem here where we really start breaking some of those confidence levels in the market and maybe breaking that 50 day moving average. That would be a little bit of a problem for us. And let's take a look at our IWM. Poor IWM um, really suffered yesterday. It just really couldn't get anything going. Um, those small t uh, caps are struggling quite a little bit here. A uh, little bit of a downtrend, broke support in that chart. And if you take a look, the next real support level in this chart is down here, retesting the lows um, of the market. So if we can rally back up, and I hope, I'm kind of hoping that we do get a little bit of relief today, we need it. Um, little push back up in here, we have quite a little bit of resistance in that chart, as you can see, to deal with. So don't be too surprised if Russell ha struggles to get through that. Let's take a look um, at our VIX. Whoops, not CIX, VIX. Um, our VIX popped again yesterday moved up as we saw that little bit of selling come in, but pulled back. We ended up still closing the day above that 20 handle. And like I said um, yesterday, um, this first pop back up, 
not really all that important. What's going to be important is if we hold a higher low and, and then bounce um, from that area. So watch that 20 area. If we can get a little bit more bullishness in the market, kind of relieve some of that fear, perhaps we can break that back down here in that chart. But we do want to be watching for that potential of that higher low. Let's take a look at our T2122. Now our T2122 um, has probably the best clues that uh, what said to me that we would probably see a little bit more selling and then maybe catch a bounce toward the end of the week um, was right in here. T2122 at its worst level yesterday was kind of right down in this area here. And then we caught that bit of a rally pushing it back up. So our T2122 was a little bit on the oversold um, on the intraday. And we did need a bit of relief um, to the selling in here. So let's keep an eye on what we got going on today. Remember T2122 doesn't really tell us direction. It just tells us where those pressure points are in the market. So if those bulls find reason or can follow through today, then we have plenty of upside potential in here in our T2122. But keep in mind if those bears were to re-engage in some way, we still have quite a bit of downside space here that we could travel before we reach that oversold condition in the market. And then our T2108, well, T2108 had a little bit of a rough day yesterday and we did break some support levels, as you can see here in the chart. We broke down below this little support here in the chart. Um, we are respecting this downtrend, as you can see in the chart. And um, good news side, we're still holding some support levels as well in that price action. So keep an eye on that. If we can continue to push back up, maybe we get another opportunity to test that upside up uh, there for a breakout. 47% uh, of our stocks holding above the 40 day moving average. Um, our T2107 didn't fare quite as well yesterday. Um, our small caps were still relatively weak even into the close. And as you can see, um, we've rejected this um, downtrend here once again. And um, the good news is we have a pretty good level of price support in here that we haven't broken yet. So perhaps if we can get those bulls fighting a little bit harder, we can rally back up and once again see if we can take a crack at breaking that downtrend um, there. But if the bears engage and we start breaking down below this area, that would be a problem for us um, here in the market. Only about 34% of our stocks holding above the 200-day moving average. Our T2101 continues to be a, a bit on the problematic side. We're just not getting um, enough uh, volume, enough follow through on stocks. If you guys have kind of noticed, we move up one day in a stock and then we reverse the next. And then a lot of seesawing going on. We just don't seem to have a whole lot of momentum. And T2101 is not really helping us out here a lot here recently. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. And um, as I said before, guys, there just isn't much on that economic calendar to um, <laughs> make any waves this morning. We've got wholesale inventories and we've got the Baker Hughes rig count. Neither one of those would be considered market moving at all and um, probably will be largely ignored uh, for the day. So not much going on there. And on the earnings calendar, very same thing. We we have, oh, 15, 16 companies listed on the calendar, but there are only three that are verified. Oh, wait a second, they have changed that. We have verified one other today um, on the chart. So let's do these really quick and you're gonna find these are not exactly market moving reports. Um, TTG. Um, is reporting today. $5 stock looks like um, that is getting hit a little bit hard this morning. Uh, BLCT um, will be reporting today. $1.38 stock, not exactly a notable. Um, BR, or excuse me, BFRI. BFRI is another one. That one looks like it's got a good uh, move here this morning, trying to break out of some, um, some uh, consolidating base in here pushing on up so that looks pretty decent if you're holding it congrats and NTZ NTZ 
um, would be the last one reporting today. Probably one of the more notables of the day overall uh, being, you know, around 12 bucks, but still in a ugly downtrend. And maybe the, new, the report on this can help it out. And uh, when I look at a chart like this and you see all these wicks and tails, it just looks like, you know, it's just a fuzzy chart. And um, I tend to stay away from those because the volatility makes it very, very challenging for you to be right on your technical analysis. Let's take a look at our um, um, some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor. Once again, I want to remind you that I'm going to be doing um, a live stream here today, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. So watch for that. But if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could do me that quick favor, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And also, um, I just truly, truly appreciate everyone that clicks that thumbs up button, leaves a brief comment, helps the channel to continue to grow. We had that, um, you know, crossing over 27,000 um, this week. So thank you so much, everyone. You guys are awesome. And thank you also to those folks that continue to support the channel through Buy Me a Coffee. Um, I truly, truly appreciate it. That link is just below the title of the video if you're interested in doing that. Let's take a look at uh, some of these stocks setting up. And please keep in mind, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, make sure you do your own due diligence on these trades. Make sure you understand the risks and make sure you're being very, very focused on your planning. Never ever follow someone else's trade ideas blindly. Let's take a look at a few of these. Um, one of the things I noticed yesterday is there was quite a lot of movement in coal. Take a look at um, ARCH. Arch Coal trying to perk up. Nice pop yesterday in that move. Now this is still in a downtrend and needs that breakout and hold, but it may be something for the watch list if we're starting to come back up here in Arch. Keep an eye on that. Um, not the same uh, true in uh, BTU. BTU continues in this upside trend and you can see popping some price resistance here in that chart and looking like it may want to follow through. You might want to keep an eye on BTU and CEIX would be another in that coal area maybe setting up you can see that nice little consolidating area in here holding price support got a little pop yesterday nice little upside trend bit choppy but trying to move on up so keep an eye on that um take a look at um our rc whoops a another sector that um, continues to just perform incredibly well. Um, oil and gas sector, um, very, very strong. Notice this nice little consolidating platform like we may want to try to pop on out. I think it's worth putting that one on the list. We saw um, lots, um, lots of stocks like Halliburton picking up yesterday. Um, just a, a ton of those. And then take a look at Valero Energy. Valero, we're seeing some pretty strong moves here in Valero, continuing to move in that upside trend. If you want to get involved in that sector, you might want to take an eye on that. And also, I think you got to take a look at that natural gas. Um, I've been holding UNG for a long term hold and um, um, just, I mean, it's just killing it. Um, and as you can see, UNG continuing to move up. You could look at other natural gas um, stocks or ETFs out there doing extremely well right now. And with the new embargoes on um, Russian oil and gas, I kind of expect that's only going to get um, higher priced. So um, keep a close eye on that. Um, take a look at um, KOS. KOS. We've been seeing, um, again, a, a lot of these um, energy stocks just resting for a little while, kind of consolidating, but um, it's these kind of platforms and this kind of a trend that I want to be watching for for that next opportunity that may, may pop on through and move on to the upside. So, you know, watch that closely. See if something like that could help you. Um, yesterday, um, Right Way Options, me and um, a bunch of us in Right Way Options uh, trading room, we took CCJ and, oh my goodness, 
this. It took off like a rocket ship. That's one of those lucky trades, I guess, in a way. we Lucky in the sense that no one knows how quickly a stock might rally when you pick it up. But boy, this one just took off after we entered. We caught it early in the day. And, and I just like these charts that slide themselves over, price slides themselves over to respect the trend. And then those buyers step up and bam, you know, um, kind of easy money um, in a way. Um, it requires patience but um, you want to watch carefully for those kind of patterns. Uh, at the end of the day, we were up over 20% um, on the day in CCJ. So um, I would fully expect some kind of a little rest or pullback in that after such a big day yesterday. So keep a close eye on that. CCJ might be of interest to you. Um, then also take a look at um, TECH. TECH, nice pop yesterday. This has been trying to work itself back through um, um, this um, ugly sell-off that it's had here in that chart. And you can see nice pop, nice little resting consolidation in that chart. And then, boy, it broke, broke out nicely yesterday. Um, we do have a concern right here in this chart. Notice this bigger price resistance in that area. So don't be too surprised if TCK needs a little bit of rest. This is not not my kind of trade, not something I typically trade. I, I just tend to avoid biotechs altogether because of their extreme volatility. Um, and when I went back in my records on um, biotechs, I could have nine winning trades and then one of them one of them, you know, bombs a report or something like that, it takes all the money back from everything I made. So um, I try to avoid them altogether. I just don't find them to be uh, great trades for me, but I know a lot of folks like them. So there you go. Um, T-E-C-H. You might want to take at um, CLX. CLX, kind of a boring old company, but notice this nice little platform in here where we've popped up, rested, and we're trying to push on through. We've got this resistance in the chart, but what um, I've been seeing is quite a few of these just old, boring, defensive sector stocks starting to perk up. And that can be one of those clues of a bit of a sector rotation in here where um, institutions are looking for a little bit more safety um, heading into the summer um, with the idea of the Fed raising rates. So keep an eye on that you might want to look at some of those dividend uh, payers they have been looking pretty good you know you could put coke in that list coke as you guys know i've been talking about for a while and um, Coca-Cola doesn't get a whole lot more boring than that, but uh, boring can be really profitable um, at, at time to time. So kind of keep those in mind. And with that, guys, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Hope to see you in the live stream 2 p.m. Eastern today, 2 p.m. Eastern today, and we'll talk over some trading concepts. I want to wish you guys all all the very best and we'll see you right back here bright and early monday morning have a wonderful day and a fantastic weekend